my name is Paula Eboli. I'm the Medical Director for Neurosurgery and the Medical Director for Endovascular Neurosurgery at Torrance Memorial Medical Center, and I'm an Assistant Professor at Cedar sinai Department of Neurosurgery. Today, we're going to talk about middle meningeal artery embolization for chronic subdural hematomas. The goal of this video presentation is to provide with the highlights and the most important aspects of this procedure. So middle meningeal artery embolization for chronic subdural hematomas can be considered a pretty new procedure. The first large series was uh, published back in 2018 in radiology by Ban et al. And since then, the utilization of this procedure has significantly expanded. The goal of this procedure is to devascularize the largest surface of the convexity of the dura. And today, there's no consensus on the best embolization material. For this reason, there are multiple embolizations that are currently used, including PVA particles, liquid embolics like onyx or MBCA. And currently, there are multiple ongoing trials, and some of them are embolic specific. And this will bring us a lot of insight once these trials are finished in which uh, embolic material performs better. So first of all, we're going to need to start with the anatomy. I borrowed this um, slide for neuroangio, and we're not going to go over every single step of this slide, but there are some important points that I would like to highlight here. First of all, it's very important to know the origin of the middle meningeal artery, which originates from the internal and maxillary artery, and then um, very close to the origin, we have the petrosal branches, which uh, are we should avoid when embolization because they can provide some vascularization to the facial nerve and potential facial nerve damage or palsy. If you follow the middle meningeal up, then you find the sphenoidal branches, which are also um, avoided during embolization because they can provide collateral to the, to the eye. And then you have the main two trunks, the anterior frontal branch and the posterior parietal branch. And these are the two that we target when we do the embolization procedure because they provide the maximum uh, vascularization to the convexity of the dura. And ideally, we would like to embolize these two branches separately. So indications for this procedure. Currently, MMA embolization is indicated for chronic mildly symptomatic subdural hematomas. It can also be done as an adjunct to surgical drainage, and you can do it either pre-op or post-operatively. And it's also indicated for those chronic subdural hematomas that are refractory to drainage, like recurrence or residual. And also, it's very important for those patients who cannot undergo surgical intervention for any medical condition and patients that need to be on anticoagulation or antiplatelet. This is a very important procedure that you can offer. It can also be offered on asymptomatic patients when the subdural hematomas are enlarging to avoid further deterioration and further development of symptoms. So in regards to the embolization technique, as I mentioned, the goal is to attempt to embolize the two main divisions of the middle meningeal artery separate. So you will approach the frontal and the parietal branch uh, separately. Sometimes this is not possible. And in these cases, it is not clear if the proximal MMA occlusion or even if one single branch occlusion that supplies the majority of the dura is equally successful. There are some contraindications uh, for this procedure, and this is very important for you to know. And it's mainly when there are a middle meningeal artery and astomosis with intracranial arteries, like for example, the ophthalmic artery, and also if the middle meningeal origin arises from an intracranial artery, like for example, from the ophthalmic artery. So now we're gonna kind of dive a little bit into the procedure. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my setup. This is the way I do it, but it could be done in many other different ways. So I do radial access, but you can easily do femoral access for this procedure. For my radial access, I use wrist or I use BMX 81. And for both of them, I use a short uh, French, a uh, seven French slender sheet. Then many times I use an intermediate catheter if I need it for extra support, like a five French Sophia or five French Esperance. And I only place this intermediate catheter if I cannot advance my guide high enough to provide enough support. 
Then as a microcatheter, I use the Headway Duo microcatheter, and that's mainly because I use Onyx as an embolization material. But as I mentioned before, you can use particles, you can use also MVCA, and today there's no uh, a better material than the other one. So we're going to go over um, a case, and we're going to do it in a very stepwise fashion so you can follow the case all the way till the end. So this is a 91-year-old female that was admitted with worsening headaches and some balance issues. You can see here on the head CT that she has chronic subdural hematoma with a little bit of subacute component and um, some midline shift. Given that her symptoms were mild and her advanced age, we offered middle meningeal artery embolization. So moving a little bit into the procedure, I put here steps. And as a first step, you want to always do a common carotid run. First of all, you want to establish your baseline, but also you want to look at some important things in this run. One of these things is the origin of the middle meningeal artery. You want to make sure it, it originates from the internal maxillary artery. Then you're also going to look at the origin of your ophthalmic artery, which originates from the um, internal carotid artery. And then you're going to look at the branches of the middle meningeal artery here. It's also very important for you to do both AP and lateral. Then you select the external carotid artery. And again, you look at the origin of your middle meningeal artery. You follow your middle meningeal artery up. And here you're going to see your posterior parietal branch. Here you're going to see your anterior frontal branch. And here you're going to see the sphenoidal branches. Here is the AP view, and it's also very important for you to recognize the anatomy in the AP view. And here you have your middle meningeal artery with the posterior parietal branch, the anterior frontal branch, and the sphenoidal branches that could potentially give some anastomosis to the eye. So when you're planning your embolization, I always look at, at a couple of things. If I have a sphenoidal branch with potentially um, anastomosis to the eye, I always plan to do my embolization distal to age and avoid the reflux past the area of the origin of that branch. And then also you have two branches that you want to embolize separately. I always try to embolize the most dominant branch, which most of the times is the frontal branch, just in case you lose your origin or you lose, you lose your access, then at least you embolize the most important branch. Then here, we super selected the, the anterior frontal branch. As I, as I told you, this is the most important branch. And for that reason, we do it first. And here, we put a little mark where, in theory, the sphenoidal branches are originating. So we don't want our onyx to reflux any further than potentially here. And here, it's a select uh, run. And you can see in this run, there's uh, blush coming from the distal arteries. And this blush is the one that, um, in theory, produces the leakage into the subdural space. So once you catheterize this artery, then onyx is injected. And here you can see the onyx cast uh, for this embolization. And ideally, you want the onyx to penetrate as much distally as possible with avoiding more proximal reflux. So this is your follow-up run here. And you can see that the anterior frontal branch has been embolized, but you still can see the filling of the phenoidal branches. And of course, the filling of the posterior parietal branch. The same here on your AP view, you can see the sphenoidal branch here, the anterior frontal branch that has been embolized and the posterior parietal branch. Then you wanna catheterize selectively the posterior parietal branch. So once this is um, selectively catheterized, you do a run, and you can see here that there's not as much blush as the anterior frontal branch, even though there is some significant blush here. So same thing for this branch, you wanna make sure you embolize it selectively and you wanna avoid the main trunk. And so you, you don't wanna reflux with your onyx past the origin of the main trunk of the middle meningeal artery. So here you can see the onyx embolization cast and also the distal penetration. And as I told you, it's good to have as much penetration as you can, but you want to avoid uh, proximal reflux. 
here is your post onyx embolization run and you can see here how the middle meningeal artery is still filling you can see here would be the petrosa branches which definitely we avoid them and here you will see on a more distal branch because it's kind of slowing down the run you will see the filling of the sphenoidal branches so here's a delay run and you can see the middle meningeal artery filling, and that's kind of the origin of the posterior parietal branch, which is embolized up to here, the origin of the frontal branch, which is embolized as from here, and the still filling of the sphenoidal branches. And the same here on the AP, you can see the filling of the sphenoidal branches, but the posterior parietal and the frontal branches are already embolized. So the patient did very well, she was discharged home uh, the next day. And this is her follow-up head CT six weeks post-op. She still has some residual hematoma, but her symptoms have completely resolved and the hematoma has significantly decreased in size. So I wanted to thank you all very much for watching. And if you're gonna start doing or consider middle meningeal artery embolization, it's very important to know your anatomy, know the contraindications and follow-up stepwise fashion. Thanks.